Okay, oh, well, was it? Well, I've started it, so no, nothing. So, are you on the stream? Can you hear yourself on the stream? Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll crack the commentary open then, and hopefully yeah, you can be heard in the stream in a few moments' time. But, hello everyone, welcome along with a few technical issues. Hopefully that is the last of them. We will find out in a few moments if it is or not. But welcome along to the Canadian Grand Prix. It is, of course, round four of the Isler One World Championship here on Xbox. And what a season it has been thus far. And uh, as you join us, it's Danny M7 at the top of the qualifying order. He has uh, set a 1 minute 10.112. He's in front of CRL Hamilton, who is second quick as a 1.10.3. EVR Morso is fourth on a 1.10.4. Then it's EVR Reynolds, fifth on a 1.10.4 as well. As we watch Gauss Grab head for the start finish line, he's currently 11 fastest and he stays 11 fastest. James, can you be heard? Have you been able to find out? You can? Can't. So you can't you can't be heard on the stream, is that what you're saying, yeah? What the hell's going on then? What is going on man? Well, I'm not sure what's going on, but um what do we do from here? Do we cancel? Do we end the stream again? Do we continue? What do we do? Acceptance. Uh, let me load up the settings again. Uh, bear with us, folks, if you're tuning in. Yeah, we are live at the moment. Uh, enable microphone ticked. Microphone volume 100%. Party chat broadcasted. Something at your end, is it? Maybe? It's, it's, I, I have Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> There's nothing for that. I think it's just uh, um, I can only enable. I'll, I'll untick the party chat thing again. Right. I don't know why the title has once again changed back to Spanish Grand Prix. No idea why it says that. Um, but I have unticked it and ticked it again. See if you can be heard now, hopefully. Yeah, I've ticked it and unticked it and ticked it again. Is it anything to do with the party, maybe? Yeah. Is it anything to do with the party? Well, what I'll do, well, what, okay, I'll, I'll create a party, right? Try and join the party, right? If, if that doesn't work.
Okay, apologies for that, folks. Hopefully, James will be heard now as we get back to the action on track. Can you be heard, James? On uh, hello. Sorry. Yes, there we go. We're sorted at long last. We fixed it. There you go. You have to host the party. That's what we need to do. But yeah, it's a learning game for myself and uh, James. Weird. We don't often use Twitch to stream, but there you go. We're finally got it up and running properly and you join us right at the sharp end of qualifying Danny M7 currently on pole with TRL Martin second and you are watching Danny M7 at the moment heading down towards that hairpin here at Canada one of the most iconic areas of the Formula One calendar that all those fans watching on the left on the right and this what is basically a stadium like section is I think Danny has uh, backed out of his lap as Martin starts another one so we'll keep an eye on him as CRL Hamilton crosses the line he's starting a flying lap as well Morso has just gone fourth or fifth quickest Reynolds has gone fourth Morso in fifth but James you join us it's going to be a thrilling into qualifying isn't it yeah it's going to be absolutely incredible Martin had dominated last time out in Spain and a tremendous comeback driver from Danny means he's got everything to prove here in Canada to prove himself once again in this top tier, but the championships are close to the top. These guys need the best qualifying possible. As Martin's actually binned it, he's actually had a bit of a moment at turn nine, which cost him his lap. That could be it all over right there for Tyrell Martin. Oh, disaster for Martin, winner in the last two races, joined the series two races ago and has totally blitzed it in those two races. But now he's under pressure. The pole looks to have slipped away from him. It's going to be second at best for TRL Martin. Danny is on a lap. Can he go even quicker? Hamilton is on a lap as well. He's opening up the DRS, going down that back straight towards the Wall of Champions. That famous chicane that's claimed so many great drivers down the years. Here comes the Mercedes, thundering his way through the final chicane, up to the line. Can CRL Hamilton put the car on pole, taking the shortest route? He can, by one tenth of a second, almost into the one minute nines. Can Danny respond? Martin moved off the front row, down into third place. Here comes Danny, through the final chicane, bustling over the cups, the back end, stepping out all over the place. As Morso goes forth, Danny oh. stays in second position and is unable to knock CRL Hamilton off top spot. EVR Reynolds has slowed right down on his lap. What about TOR Leopard? He will be the last man except Hayden to see the line. Leopard then in the Renault, for half a second away from pole position. What can he do? He's, well, he only needs to find a couple of tens to really move himself up that grid. Bundling his way through the final chicane, up towards the line comes the yellow car, and he's backed out of the lap as he approaches the line. I think he might have cut a corner there, so it's all over here in qualifying. Well, we didn't get much of it, James, but when we did, it was br br brilliant, wasn't it? It was insane. Yeah, absolutely fantastic uh, to see that so close uh, in qualifying there. Top two, just a few hundred of a second's difference. Real shame that Leopard couldn't get that good lap in. You've got, he's not underwriting this championship at all. He's right up there, but look how close that is between most of the guys. Top 15 cars separated by eight tenths of a second. Stellar qualifying session. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I mean, I, once again, I must apologise. We had some technical issues. We couldn't give it up, bring it all to you and build you up to that incredible finish. But we got the most crucial part, and that was CRL Hamilton snatching the pole right at the very end. He beats Danny, who is second. TRL Martin, Martin is third. EVR more so fourth, and EVR Reynolds is fifth. Well, what a thrilling qualifying session. And we've got the race coming your way in a few moment's time and we'll have the cars lining up on the grid most of them starting on that ultra soft tire will it be a one-stop race or is it a two uh, i'm not too sure what do you know uh, james i've well i've been speaking with again a couple of the drivers they seem to think it is probably going to be the one stop they can try the two stop it's a bit of a weird one because you can do the two stop you may be quite fast at the end but you're going to lose so much time with the pits is it worth it do you just want to stay out of the supers uh these guys will be playing mind games like that all race long. Trouble is as well, I don't know whether you can see, well, you should be hopefully, those clouds yeah. look particularly appealing, don't they, for some wet weather. Yeah, absolutely. There's every possibility we can have some uh, 
wet conditions as, as this race goes on. It was uh, lovely earlier on this morning as we walked into the paddock, but the rain maybe is on the horizon. But at the moment, it is dry tyres for the, uh, the cars out on track. The top 10, of course, must start on the tyres they qualified on, and I believe they are all on the Ultrasoft compound. What will the guys outside the top 10 do? Well, they try the long run. It certainly will be make for a thrilling Grand Prix on strategy as the cars get ready then for the start of round four in the championship. It's TRL Martin that's showing up on pole. That can't be right. That's a complete glitch with the game, I think. So it is CRL Hamilton that leads away from pole, running into turn one. Danny M7 under pressure from Martin as they go into the first corner. They all keep it clean, no bumping, and it's all clear through turns one and two. They head out of there and down into the, that tight chicane. Is there going to be any incident through there? It doesn't look like it. And it's CRL Hamilton from Danny, Martin, more so and Meadows. Will there be any repeat of uh, Hartley's crash the other day? Hopefully not, and I don't think there is. They all seem to be making it through nice and clean, James. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't look like there's been any further action further back. It does look like the, uh, Reynolds and Morsock are side by side as they head down towards. I think that is turn nine. He's not close enough to get a move done there, though, Morsock. Pretty average start has to be said from Danny. I expected a little bit more from him off the line. Rosberg is also all over the back of Morsock, down in towards the hairpin. Very, very close. He had a little look, didn't he? There was no way through there, but that's a thrilling battle shaping up between those three. Reynolds, Morso, and Rosberg. And Drawmaster isn't far behind either. A little bit further up the road, you've got TRL Martin defending hard, or sorry, attacking, I should say, on Danny in second position. A few position changes on that opening lap. K has gone up the most. He's up three places from 30th place. Another shot for the back. That's uh, AVR Reynolds, Reynolds off the road. And James, I didn't quite catch it. Did you see what happened? I think there's a slight contact, I think, with the Toro Rosso behind or Rosberg. It's one of the two because they're the closest to him. But that is not what you want in the first lap. To be fair, Danny actually, I think, I'm oh, sorry, Hamilton tapped the wall of champions as he came through there. I don't think there's any damage on that Mercedes, but that's a big blow for the Ferrari of uh, Reynolds dropping him all the way back down to the back. That's a real shame for Reynolds, it was uh, shaping up to be a fantastic race for him. It looked really appealing, really exciting for us viewers, but unfortunately it's all gone undone as Mike Marshmallow slides the rear end of his car down in 13th place. Some breathtaking action going on all the way through the field at the moment. Barely any car separated by over a second. The only one is uh, Martin and Morso. A little bit of a gap between those two as we keep an eye on this battle between Kay, Mike Marshmallow and Gauss Crab. And here goes Mike up the inside. Is he going to make that move stick into the hairpin? He's going to go side by side all the way through. But unfortunately for him, Kay clings on to that 12th place and Mike Marshmallow will have to try once more. His only problem though is look who's right behind him. Gauss Crab right up behind him as they go down towards that final chicane. Mike Marshmallow, oh, pulls up alongside K, breaks really late on the brakes and makes the move stick. K forced to go off the road and he might even lose another place to Gauss Crab. And indeed he does as they go down towards turn one. And look at Hayden as well, right there. But there's no way through for him. And uh, maybe there is, he might still make it. No, not quite, onto the grass. And K clings on. He made three places up at the start, James. He's losing them very quickly. Yeah, again, it's the ideal starts around this circuit. If you start on the, um, well, if you like, the even side of the field or the uh, second place or all the way down that kind of order, you've not really got the right run going to turn one. And it's just, you're just having to keep your nose in there for turn two. This is a big lap, though, for Danny, actually, back at the front. Duras is enabled, and he's got a real chance on Hamilton as they enter the hairpin. He needs a good exit coming out of this hairpin. He's going to maximise his chances towards the final chicane. A lot of action going on in the midfield, so Danny trying to set a move up on Hamilton. Can he get that move done any time soon? I'll tell you who is looking at making a move very soon. It's VASR V6 Racing. He's right up behind TR Apex. He was so close to qualifying for the Pro Draft, but ended up crashing down at Sandevot when he was running in position to get into the Pro Draft. So it was agony for him. He couldn't quite make it. Many of the drivers in this field have indeed made it. Indeed, one of them, CRL Hamilton, qualified in the first stage of qualifying and might not be able to make it due to his age, which is such a shame. I wonder and hope there might be a way that he can get himself involved, James, because this is such a uh, high quality field, isn't it? And a lot of these drivers deserve Oh, chance. Hamilton, sorry to cut across. Hamilton's lost part of his front wing. He smashed into the wall at uh, turn four. He's got lost on so much end plate on the front of that Mercedes. Oh my goodness me, he's lost all kinds of momentum. He's losing everything. He's weaving on the straight now. Hamilton then, he's got big problems on the front end of that Mercedes. Wow, well that is big problems for him. His chances of winning the race are almost gone already. He might still lead it, but he's going to start 
uh, bottling everyone up behind, is he? Is he going to stay out, James? That's the big question. I, I'm not sure if he can. He might try to, but it is not going to work, surely. As more so in Rosberg, though, dueling behind that. We need to go back to the battle for the lead, though, because here comes Danny. He can smell blood. CRL Hamilton is in real danger, and that defence suggests he is staying out. So here we go. To the outside of the road goes Danny. In that Force India. Can he sweep round the outside? Martin. Oh, he can. Absolutely incredible move. But look at Martin. He's coming in to get involved as well. Hamilton does everything he can to defend. He can do nothing about Danny. He stormed past him with a beautiful move. And now Martin is all over him as well. And will pretty soon be finding a way through, James. What a move that was. Absolutely stunning move from uh, Danny there. Martin nearly got on the active feet. He had enough momentum. He was surely through. You've got to watch Rosberg behind as well. He's closing in on these guys. Uh, Drawmaster and um, also got into the scraps as well. The Drawmaster won that battle. It's all kicking off at the front though. Hamilton is holding what will could be a massive train of cars fighting for second place in this race. Yeah, but surely Martin will get the jump soon as Hamilton now picks up a three-second time penalty. Oh, the problems are beginning to mount for him. Frontline damage at a track like this is not something you want. You, it's so many high-speed chicanes here. You've got to go through, isn't it? And if you have any sort of understeer, you're just going to go cutting across the grass and damaging your chances of a good result by getting those penalties. It's a, a bit like Australia in a way with those high-speed chicanes that you can easily pick up penalties and look at this Martin smells blood as well and Hamilton eventually decides that that was not worth continuing with and he with his three second time penalty oh look at yeah you're right Rosberg pulling alongside side by side down into turn one can he find a way round the outside of Martin of all people oh he might just find a way through and has Martin ghosted there I think he did ghost but somehow he is going to hold on to that position, is he? Rosberg still there. What a duel. And Martin off the road now. And Drawmaster sweeps in. And Martin loses a couple of places in a couple of corners. Unbelievable race, this, James. This is Unbelievable. Oh, my God. There goes uh, Martin around the outside of uh, uh, was it Rosberg. It was one of the Drawmasters now going side by side. I think that with uh, Morso behind Marshall. as well. It's all kicking off. Unbelievable. So Martin back up into third. John Master was briefly up into uh, third place. He's now all the way back down in sixth. Make that seventh. So many cars battling down in the lower reaches. Oh, I was saying, this is mental. How am I supposed to game up with this? Oh, bring up, bring back ITV with the ad breaks. The commentators need a break here. This is incredible. What a start to the race. And Drawmaster, he was third a few corners ago. He's now seventh. Apex has gone past him. Leopard's gone past him. Morso's gone past him. And Martin's gone past him as well. And in the same lap, he'd overtaken Martin. Unbelievable. And now, Martin's attacking Rosberg. This is absolutely insane. Martin, side by side with Rosberg in a turn one. And he's through. How many overtakes? Oh. As they're been in this race, it's only seven laps old. There's been about 15 times the number of overtakes there was in the actual Canadian Grand Prix a few weeks ago. Isn't there, James? This has been incredible. Absolutely, yeah. It's unbelievable. I'll let you catch your breath there, but Rosberg, what a battle that was. It's from like at least second, all the way down to at least tenth. That's unbelievable, Steve. I've described to you before this race, Spanish Grand Prix last time out, the best race I've ever seen. This is already right up there. Absolutely incredible. And it's not over yet, we're only on lap seven. You've got so much to look forward to in this race, hopefully. Surely, surely we do. Yeah. Yeah, the only bit of sad news is what's happened to CRL Hamilton. He's dropped right out of this picture. We don't like seeing contact because that ends up with cars dropping down to the field as we now watch Dralix pull around the outside of VSEC Racing and is he going to make that stick? There's another beautiful move to add to the collection in this Grand Prix. I don't know about you James, I think Danny still holds the title of the best move so far but here comes VSEC Racing straight back at Dralix down towards that final chicane. Is he going to send one up the inside? Oh he tries to, he knocks the back of him. Dralix all out of shape over the chicane and goes for a spin. Oh no, what a shame for him and just like he's teammate EBR Reynolds, he comes to grief at the Wall of Champions. I can't believe that nobody else made more contact than that. That could have been an absolute plane crash. And Dralix, I believe that his home Grand Prix has gone for an absolute mare here, down in 15th place now. But the likes of Gorsh and Mike, they've just found themselves in the correct position at the right time. Hayden's on for, to score points for the first time, I believe, this season. It's looking good from all of their perspective. What a race. This is uh, 
this has been so far, and uh, it's a real shame there. What do you think, Andralix? Was he trying a little bit too hard, a bit too greedy on the brakes, James, perhaps, into that final chicane? It certainly it, seemed like it, didn't it? It was, uh, was it V6 behind, at least? It, could, it uh, definitely seemed like he was being a bit ambitious on the brake pedal. One of them, they definitely oh, were sorry, being yeah, ambitious on the brake pedal. Yeah. So, um, yeah, V6, I'm not sure what went down. I'm not sure what he was really thinking. It was too ambitious. Those curbs are going to throw you off badly. As Antsman is our first retirement in this Grand yeah. Prix. And he's uh, spun down at, what's that, around turns four and five? Between turns four and five, he's in and off. So Ant-Mats is uh, out of the Grand Prix. Hopefully he doesn't leave the session. We'd like our drivers to stay in the session to give us this brilliant action because as you know, there's a slipstream glitch with this game when drivers leave sessions. It leaves us with a situation where it's very difficult to overtake as the slipstream is often taken away from the drivers. But what a breathtaking start of the race. It is after nine laps. Nine laps already, James. Nine laps. Where have they gone? How the hell has that happened? Danny in seven leads from TRL Martin in second. Rosberg is third with EVR Morso in fourth. Oh, I don't know how much longer uh, Martin's going to be second because Rosberg is all over him, James. Look at this. Right on his tail as he goes down to that mid chicane. I can't believe what they're witnessing here. He needs to get on board with Rosberg. He's looking racy. And he had such a disappointing race last time out in Spain, dropping like a fly at the towards the end of that Grand Prix. He had a bit of damage to his front wing, yes, but he cannot afford to lose any points. Mike Marshmallow is going for a move actually on V6 and gets the move done nicely into the hairpin. And V6 is, well, doing exactly what Rosberg was doing the week ago, dropping like a stone in this race. And, um, Needs to get on a little bit, I think, V6. Uh, no, sorry, Rosberg uh, sort of pit, Martin's pit. Yeah, Martin into the pits, has quite an early stop. It's V6 racing as the rear end stepping out through that final chicane. I think he's uh, right rear, might have clipped the wall there. As, uh, what's Martin gone on to? Uh, what kind of tyres is he putting uh, on? Uh, another set of ultra softs. Ooh, Maybe there okay. is rain. That's a either, yeah, either there's rain or two stop, but I would think what you're saying is, is quite right. Rain, perhaps. And Apex, that bring I'm also, on. sorry, it's all oh, close, sorry, I had to go across, it was getting close into uh, the chicane there, Drawmaster was all over these guys as well, this is actually really close between these guys, if Apex is going to get a move done into turn 9, he's going to think better off it, these two Toronto teammates were holding each other up massively last time out in Spain, they cannot afford to do the same here, they keep dropping points doing that, and uh, it's ultimately going to cost them, but uh, yeah, that rain surely should be coming pretty soon, you'd think. That's leaving the session. What are you doing, man? No, to be a words about that one. Not happy to see that. Disappointing from him. Drawmaster then versus Apex versus Morso. You were quite right. It cut across me there. That was looking pretty insane between those guys. And uh, yeah, that's, you're absolutely right, James. Rain might be on the way, and Drawmaster maybe thinks the same. Rosberg, Rosberg's made a mistake. Sorry, he made a mistake on the final corner. Uh, he didn't lose anything. I'm sorry for cutting you across, but uh, he just Don't makes worry. these. Actually, mistakes and Rosberg's just almost broke Jake Morso as they come through turn two. I can't believe what I've just seen there. Rosberg almost just slammed on the brake pedal. But um, yeah, they've stayed as they were and you don't want to be driving like that any time in this race, Mr. Rosberg. He uh, wants to keep himself to himself in this race, I'm sure. But go back to what you were saying, Andy. I do apologise. Yeah, I don't know if there was uh, maybe some lag there. I, I doubt he would have brake checked him, but maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I, I would, we're not, I'm not so sure. We'll, we'll wait and see come the end of the Grand Prix about that one. But yeah, those three battling really hard. Yeah, back to what we're discussing on uh, tyres, James. Uh, you might be right in, in what you're suggesting there. Uh, if, if, why would Martin go on to the Ultrasoft? Because who else came into the pits there? Drawmaster did, so, and he put softs on. So maybe, maybe, Maybe he's one stop. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's a one stop for Drawmaster and a two stop for Martin. Maybe there isn't any rain, because surely Drawmaster would have went on to the Ultrasofts as well if there was rain. Strange. Very strange. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, uh, whether the rain comes or not, it's going to be a thrilling race as another pit stop is being made, and that's CRL Rosberg. What tyre does he go on? Surely if it's softs, that dismisses any chance of rain, James. Would you agree? Yeah, he's going on to those soft tyres. Oh, it's super... Ooh, oh, it's one super. of them. Oh, so oh, two tyres it's soft, soft. It's soft. Yep. so yeah, kind of soft, definitely uh, goes to the end then, no chance of any movement there. I think Gorsh has been passed by Hayden actually, so Hayden is technically in a net P9, I think that is. Thomas isn't too far behind Gorsh either. Uh, yeah, you're right though, what is Martin doing? It, is this uh, like a glitch perhaps, because you do see it quite often on this game where the wrong tyres are on the car. But um, hopefully, no, no, they, uh, whatever the timing ladder says, whatever the t whatever the timing ladder says is correct. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, sometimes so you can see it on the track. He's definitely on ultras then. That's a weird strategy yeah. from Martin. Very weird. Not sure what he's thinking. Yeah. Maybe there is rain. Maybe the others haven't cottoned on. Maybe you're right. But I doubt it though. I mean, the drivers of this quality, Rosberg and Drama, so you'd expect them to have cottoned on to that, wouldn't you? Leopard, of course, as yeah. well, has been in the pit at some point and fitted a set of the soft compound tyres. So I don't know what's going on. It's certainly going to be one to watch, but Danny, Morso, Apex, Mike Marshmallow, they're all staying out at the moment. And I think Gosh has lost another place uh, in the midst of all of this. He, he's dropped behind Thomas as well. And has he got any uh, response to Thomas? Maybe those ultra softs are really starting to go off now because that's a super soft runner and a soft runner gone past him. And let's see how far Hayden and Thomas can go into this race, but they're, they're running pretty well, aren't they? Absolutely, you want to check on that because that is uh, quite a crucial part of this race, I suppose. Only suggestion on Martin, going on to those ultras, the gap between him and Danny was about 3 three or 3.2 seconds, about 3 to 3.2 seconds. Now, if you can make that up on ultras, he's obviously pushing it towards the end on those super soft tyres. He may be in a prime position to pounce, perhaps to take the lead of this race, but he's going to have to make up some huge amounts of time. If he's going to pull this off because it would probably be one of the best to see the calls I've ever seen. If he could pull it off, it'd be incredible. More so, has let his uh, teammate Apex through at the hairpin. Toros are doing this, as I say, last time out in Spain. This is a two, uh, this is a pretty frequent sight, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, let's see when Danny and uh, the, the well, whole of the top four at least uh, come in as Danny hits as soon as I said it. Yeah, so Danny Ann also, uh, when you were, uh, well, and also there, the V6 Racing picked up another three second time penalty. And crucially, TRL Martin did on that lap as well. So three seconds of time penalties lost there for Martin. That's a shame for him. He doesn't want to be doing that. So he's now, what, in eighth position, seventh position. He's just gone past K, I think. And Hamilton, look at Hamilton. Despite that front wing damage, he's not far away from Martin. And is Martin going to get the jump on Danny into turn one? No, he's not. Danny is still ahead of Martin. So crucial stuff there. But Danny comes out into traffic, Thomas directly in front. Will Thomas decide to try and get in his way? Hamilton passes K as well. So he's now right behind Martin, and Martin's right behind Danny on the road. But for how much longer as Danny gets tucked right up behind Thomas, going into that second sector of the lap. He could really do with getting past him and keeping that cushion to Martin, couldn't he? Absolutely, I was going to say, Martin needs a big lap this lap, and uh, he's not going to get it in thanks to Tom. So uh, Martin is now going to have to make this up all by himself. And uh, yeah. Actually, interesting, the 2-4 Cindy is double stacked technically there. I mean, one came in and just a few seconds down the road, Mike came in as well. Good teammates, though, so I suggested it last time out. I suggested it pretty much all season. But um, they just do seem to work like clockwork, those two. And uh, it's um, it's good to see. Uh, he has gone on to the super soft tyres, Mike, I believe. So, um, slightly different strategy. Actually, no, he is on the soft tyres. So, uh, yeah, he's also going on. Also into the pits. Yep, so more so in uh, the two, uh, oh, Thomas moving aside there for TRL Martin, interestingly, so no uh, no way of holding him up, decides totally against that and lets him go, but uh, yeah, more so into the pits, uh, quite a late stop there for the uh, Dutchman picks up a three second time, they? for the uh, Toro Rosso driver, interesting to see that, so uh, he's gone on to the super soft tyre, is that going to be the same strategy for his teammate, will he be in it as well at the end of this lap, we'll keep an eye on that, but Pretty long stint from these guys on those Ultrasofts, isn't it, compared to everyone else? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, We should look out on the uh, Drawmasters making a move, sorry, on now because they come towards uh, turn nine. Done. Rosberg just make the move on him and it's got past as well. Crucial lap for those guys as well. Drawmaster on those softs. It's weird. It's how long can those soft tyres go? How long could the likes of Tom and uh, elsewhere? So I'm pretty sure, I think it's only Thomas now on those Ultrasofts. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, go on. Leopard, Leopard threw on Kay as well into that hairpin there. Lovely move as Kay begins to struggle a little bit. So Leopard makes his move with Kay on those super softs, of course. So he started on those because he was outside the top ten as Apex to race leader. Now Pitts, Hamilton threw on Thomas as well now as Thomas just continues on his way. Uh, pretty clever driving from Thomas, isn't it? Just to uh, just negotiate his way through, let the faster cars that are a uh, pit stop ahead just go through and take it easy and uh, that's exactly what Thomas is doing, doesn't want to lose any time, he's fighting to try and get a few points in this race James, doesn't he, come the, come the end of this Grand Prix. Absolutely, totally different race to any of these guys, he's, that's very wise driving from Tom, um, has to be said, as uh, the Canadian of Jurassic goes fast as four with a 12 point Stefan on the super soft tyres, which uh, could be quite a crucial lap I suppose because 
Super Softs may be the best race tyre to have in this race. You can do the one stop from the Oxford to the Supers, but you are pushing it ever so much. So, uh, yeah, those soft runners, as you say, it's quite a crucial race for Tom. He's doing okay so far. Let's just see how he continues. Because all battles going on around him, he could get some pretty good points out of this race today. Yeah, absolutely. He really could. As we now look at Leopard, he's on a move now, isn't he? A real battle could be developing here between Rosberg, Drawmaster, and Leopard is K. As uh, now overtaken by Apex, and more so won't be far behind doing the same thing too. As uh, they all do battle, but yeah, really beginning to shape up between Rosberg, Drawmaster, Leopard, and perhaps very soon the two Toro Rostos that are now on faster tyres as well by stretching their stints out. Could be a fantastic battle for that final podium spot, couldn't it? And maybe Martin as well with this three second time penalty. Absolutely. Um, Hayden's actually in the Sauber and he's ahead of Danny. Now, if you remember rightly, Martin is in the Sauber. Um, I wonder if there's any little speaking to do between these guys. Um, I'm okay, so what's going on? Yeah, another penalty for Halson. Check back on that battle though between Rosberg, uh, Drawmaster and Lepp because that could get properly tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Thomas this time, he's not interested actually in uh, letting them go. Maybe he's trying to help his teammate get ahead of Rosberg, is that what he's trying to do? Maybe try and give uh, the slipstream to his teammate if he can at any point here. Uh, maybe try and hang Rosberg out to dry, here comes Thomas. Is he going to try and hang Rosberg out to dry here? That might be a good idea to try that. Oh, Rosberg forced to go the outside, it's going to work for him. And meanwhile behind that, Leopard is uh, all over. Uh, the back of Drawmaster can't find a way through, and Rosberg clears Thomas. No one else makes the move. Meanwhile, out front, Danny is now back into the lead as Hayden drops behind Danny and Martin, and uh, the looks of it, had no interest in helping his teammate out. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, here we go. Drawmaster's got past Thomas. There you go. Easy done. Uh, is he going to let Leopard through? Leopard's going to actually it could be three wide into the first corner. Oh. I think Leopard's going to get the move done. Leopard, oh, makes contact with Thomas. But uh, they all keep it on the road. Then the Toro also just was a long way around. That's Apex and also oh, wow. swapped him there. The Williams has just been carnage deep with Toro Rosso's. That's not what you want. Oh. Contact between the two Toro Rosso's. And that's not what you want. Two teammates coming together. And I think more so. We'll eventually get this move done on Thomas. Yes, he will. He's barging him out of the way. Look at him getting his elbows out. Around the outside he goes. There is his move to P9. Getting very feisty, as I suggested. Well, Thomas paid the price there for trying to help his teammate out, didn't he? He let Drawmaster through. He made it a feisty one with Leopard. The only one he's made feisty in the whole race so far. Leopard was in no mood to hang around. Went storming down the inside. For me, it was extremely brave on the brakes. For me, it was extremely hard driving, hard racing, and crucially for me, on the limit of fairness. And I would just about say that's racing, and it's tough luck for Thomas. And as you say, after that, he was absolutely swamped by the two Toro Rossos. Unbelievable. And uh, there just wasn't room for two Toro Rossos going through that chicane, was there? And uh, luckily, they both didn't run into each other too badly there, James. Absolutely. I'm keeping an eye on uh, Martin and Danny. I mean, it seems quite an interesting one because Martin is, as we said, on those ultra soft tyres. Danny on the softs. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Martin's not really gaining much time on those ultras anymore. He needed to make more time up in those first few laps that he had those ultras. That's what may cost him in this race. He's really struggling now. He's about 1.3. He could still get Danny, but if he does, he's now got he's then got to pull away from him. And honestly, the form that Danny looks in at the moment, hope I'll touch wood, um, he's looking very good. He doesn't look like he's going to be beat very easily in this race. So uh, Martin may have a big old task ahead of him. Maybe, maybe to finish on the podium in this race so, at the moment. So it could get interesting as the race progresses. Yeah, I earlier on said that Martin had won the last two. He didn't. He almost won the last two, of course, in Bahrain. He was on course to before that puncture ended all hopes of any points whatsoever. So, my mistake for that one. Of course, Martin drove so well that day, he deserved the 25 points. So, yeah, as you say, as Hamilton picks up yet another time penalty, he's mounting them up, isn't he? That must be his third or fourth. He's having a bit of a nightmare this afternoon dealing with those penalties as Hamilton. So, trouble for him as TR Apex now sets a brand new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. But, Martin. As you say, he's going to have to stop once more if it doesn't rain, which I don't think it's going, going to, given by the tyre choices that people have made, apart from him. It looks like he's going for that two-stop, but he's got to first overtake Danny, build three seconds, and then build a full pit stop on him if he wants to win. Yeah, it's going to be his work cut out, I think, to get anywhere near the podium. Look at that, the, the field is so tightly 
tightly spread and that that's all down to the good work of the guys in the ILR making sure we got a really tight field in this top tier and it really is providing us games with some great racing isn't it brilliant oh, oh absolutely fantastic it may be one of the best seasons of league race I've ever seen Xbox has probably never seen a league this close it's absolutely immense but the battle the net battle for the podium Rosberg Drawmaster, Leopard, Apex in there as well. I'm ruling out Hamilton for the pure basis. Yeah, and more so, but ruling out Hamilton for the pure basis. He has so many penalties, and he is really on another strategy in this race. Yeah, Hamilton, well, struggle was there. Was that a pit stop there from Hamilton? It was, yeah. he's coming in. So he's gone into the pit lane off the Super Softs. He will come, and what will he go on to now? I presume he will go on to the another set of super so there you go he's not going to touch the softs of course that early pit stop brought him right out of contention and he's back out on his way hayden and, uh, is doing yeah. Go on. Yeah, he's doing it yeah he's you know, carry on hayden he is doing a great job isn't he what a stint this is carry on yeah he's still on those super soft tires i can't believe what i'm saying he could be rapid at the end he could be on for the fast step of the race i mean if he goes into those ultras i would like to think he should be but leopard uh, speaking of the minister, this is looking pretty race on the back of Draw Master. Of course, Draw Master has made it to the sports uh, pro draft or whatever it is, so he's uh, made it through to that stage of proceedings. He's got Apex on his tail as Leopard as well, so it's all very much as Apex goes for a move and uh, can't get the move done. The very race he is on supers as well, so uh, he will, of course, want to be getting his way through the pack quite quickly. Those both the Toros are on supers, both going to the end of this race as well so want to keep an eye on those two towards the end of this race as long as they don't make contact with each other yeah it's a thrilling battle for that final podium spot as hayden finally comes in he's going to drop so many places the field is that tight that he's going to drop so many places down the field by the time his tires by the time he gets through the field his tires will be mince meat and his chances of getting that podium will be extremely unlikely he's going to drop outside the top 10 i would have thought He's already dropped to 10th and he's still in the pit lane. 11th, 12th, 30th, he's going to drop right to the very back. Of there you go. 15th position for Hayden as he rejoins. But as you said a few moments ago, he's going to be absolutely flying on those ultra softs. He's got so many runners on supers and softs up in front. They're on worn tyres and it's going to be fun to watching it, watching him come through the field. Have you got any predictions for the James? How far can he get up? What do you think? I mean, I want to see how to score a point because he's been saying in the chat, he's been almost dying in the chat, saying, I need a point, give me a point, and he's not had a point for, I don't think he's had a point this season. And Leopard, he's put for oh, a lunch on Drawmaster, it's there, but he goes, he's gone for the move, can Drawmaster hold him on the outside, and it looks like he's giving it a good go, and I don't think Leopard's going to get the move done here, but watch him on the run down to the chicane. Yeah, with, with the DRS in action, he will be sprinting like a leopard onto his tail. Here he goes, TOR Leopard. Is he going to make a move up the inside of the Swedish driver? Not quite, and Drawmaster clings on. Great racing between the pair into the hairpin. So much respect shown between these top level drivers, and Drawmaster has the upper hand at, for, uh, at the moment. It's lap 23 out of 35 of what's been an ILR classic here. Has it been better than Melbourne? I'm not sure. Has it been better than Spain? I'm not sure, but it has been in another sensational race and uh, the back link continues. Danny leads, Martin second, yet to stop, or sorry, needs to stop again. Then Rosberg, Drawmaster, Leopard, Apex, all in a queue. What a race. Absolutely fantastic race, isn't it? Uh, so close. Canadian Grand Prix in 2018 in real life was pretty terrible. But if there's any way oh, you can make yeah. up for it, yeah, it's a race like this, isn't it? So, uh, absolutely fantastic to see. Martin is still within that one second bracket, or what say within. Oh, he's only on. just got Hayden's within. Making a move. Go on. Yep, sorry to come across you there. Hayden, he's already up to 11th place. He was 15th a moment ago. CRL Hamilton, unseen by myself, has actually retired from the Grand Prix now. And Hayden, uh, after passing Gorsh, has now got himself a penalty as well. A three second time penalty, so not good for Hayden. We said we wanted to, him to get a point. He's going to do that easily at this rate. If you take penalties out of the equation, he's already on the tail of Thomas. Mike, and V6 racing, so there's a three car scrap for 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th and there's a multi car scrap for the final few podium spots. This is just insane and there's a move being made here by Mike Marshmallow on V6 and a feature of the races has been Mike Marshmallow charging through the field and uh, he spoke, I spoke to him before in a couple of races, a couple of uh, off camera a few times and he said his qualifying is not his strong point, his race pace is brilliant as he has another look at V6 racing into turn one, but he can't quite find his way through, James. He's doing well, though, isn't he? As I said, yeah, absolutely. 
Mike is seemingly just one of the, he's quite consistent in the race. He's looking very good, strong indeed. I think he's going to be fifth or sixth of the championship. Isn't really doing that bad for himself. He is going to have to watch his mirrors though because that Salva, as I said to you, looks rapid. He's already in the point table. He's now just milking it. Look at this. He's going to go for the move for Mike. It's all turn nine. And there's nothing Mike Marshmallow can do about that, surely. Look at that, he's into turn nine of all places. Oh, look how close that is on the exit. And through goes Hayden up into ninth. Mike Marshmallow, he's a feisty driver. He likes to fight hard, he likes to charge through the field. On this occasion, he's going to have to drop back one place because Hayden is going like an absolute steam train at the moment. That late pit stop is uh, working wonders for him at the moment. He's got 10 laps to go. I think this might be the last car he gets to because uh, after V6 racing, He's got a full 12 seconds to make up to more, so that would be an uphill task, wouldn't it, James? Oh, oh then he gets the three the seconds time penalty. I believe, I was just about to say, all those guys ahead of him are actually fighting for the podium. So, um, I mean, he could still get one, but I mean, that would have to be like a spa crash in order for that to happen. So, I mean, we saw seen some drama before. Drama is still for behind I'm Rosberg. I'm going to have a look at the penalties for you, just to keep an eye out. Oh. Who exactly has got what at the moment? Rosberg's got a penalty. Strawmaster's got a penalty. Leopard's got a penalty. Two penalties. Uh, another one. Yeah, okay. So that puts uh, Strawmaster technically in third. Apex has got two penalties as well. What about also? He's got. Oh, hold on, we're going to move here. We've got side by side banging wheels. Apex and uh, Leopard trading paint down at the hairpin. All the fans in the grandstand are on their feet. And is Apex through? Look at that. Incredible battling between the two. Oh, this is just insane. What a race. Apex up into fifth. Leopard back into sixth. And they were trading paint all the way through the hairpin, rubbing tyres. And the fans were absolutely loving it. That's now allowed more so right back onto the tail of this pair. And uh, well, forget the penalties. Is there any point in trying to tally them up? There's been that many. I suppose we'll just have to tally them up at the end. And uh, we still await Martin coming into the pits again. And that will also move up Hayden and V6 and Mark Mike a few places as well. Because of that pit stop from Martin, he'll drop right behind and maybe even outside the top 10, in fact, James. Incredible. Do wonder if he's. I really do wonder if he's actually on another set of tyres because it, it actually could be. A you surely would have pit by now. But if you can stretch those doctors that long, although he is now losing time to Danny, which does suggest that he definitely could have got a worse state of time. Actually, this it could well be for second place between Rosberg, Jerome Master, and the, the absolute mess behind him as well. So, yeah, it's all going to kick off. Hayden is 12.2 seconds behind. I want to see how much that gap closes. I'll keep an eye out for us, but uh, it's going to be interesting to say the least. It's not a glitch I've ever seen before, but it does say that Martin has not been in the pitch yet. So that does suggest to me that he might also be on the soft compound tyre. Um, it says that he's not been through the pit lane. So that suggests that the game has not registered his pit stop and believes he's still on the ultra soft. And that would suggest to me that that is false information and that you are right to say it would be false information and that he is on the soft compound tyre as well. So that's what that says to me. The fact that he's not been in the pitch yet, and of course, he should have been in the pitch once again by now, you would have thought. Absolutely right. Apex is uh, closing right in on uh, Drawmaster. I said, watch out for those Toro on those super soft tyres. It's again proving right. I was honestly a conspiracy theorist in the last race. Um, I said, Danny on lap 28, we get really close, we'll make a load of moves. Danny on lap 28 made a load of moves, so yeah, I could be. I mean, it's quite an obvious statement, I know, but let's see what Apex can do, whether he's going to. Outbreak draw master. Draw master, I know, is fantastic with the break. Oh, although Apex is going to give it a good go into the hairpin and uh, it doesn't quite get the move done into the hairpin. Draw master keeps his fourth place for now, at least. And for now, only just. Goodness me, that was incredible uh, on the breaks from Apex there. I thought it was going to clatter them both off, on, off them to the runoff area. Quite incredible. But uh, nope, he knows his breaking point and uh, the battle. Continues. Rosberg holding on to that third place at the moment. It could be any one of him, Drawmaster, Apex, Leopard, Morso. Take your pick. Which one's going to get that final podium space? If we I believe and agree that Martin is on the softs and not the ultras, as it says. And that's certainly what all the evidence is pointing towards. As Apex gets right up behind Drawmaster, who was out of shape coming out of turn two and three as they go sweeping down now to four and five. And a penalty for TR Apex 97 as well. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get the third place? I'm sticking with Rosberg. I don't know about you, James. I think Rosberg on track will get it, but I think oh, well, yeah, Master 
purely based off um, anything else. It looks like it could be Draw Master. And uh, that would be fantastic to see as well. So, uh, yeah, Apex will give it his absolute all, though. He's going to just assume, all these guys are going to assume that there's loads of penalties, or maybe no penalties at all, and they're just going to go, you know what, just go balls to the wall. You know, let's just go for it. Let's see how much we can make in this race. And, um, you know what, it's been a fantastic race. If you're in the chat, let us know your drive the day has been. There's plenty of protagonists, oh. let's just say that. How the hell do we, how the hell do we pick one for that? <laughs> Move the, move, even move of the day is going to be a nightmare. There's yeah. that many. I'd probably say Danny around the outside of the wounded Hamilton. Wounded or not, it was a ridiculous move to, to make to get that to stick. As we keep an eye on Mike versus Gosh in the battle for 10th and 11th, the final point up for grabs. And look at that! Dicing all over the road is Gosh trying to find a way through. He tries the outside on Mike, but Mike's having none of it. And he remains holding on to that 10th place with uh, Gosh in behind in 11th. Uh, a, a good little battle between those two. Good friends, aren't they? I'd, I'd like to think they are. They run a league with each other once upon a time, so I'd like to think that they're all okay with each other. Um, this is very reminiscent. I've got a lot of deja vu at the moment uh, with Rosberg, holding a train up. I mean, I'm not, there's no way an offensive comment, but um, last time out, was holding pretty much a train behind him, and then finished sixth, I believe, in that race. So oh, really what are you saying? Are, we, are you saying happen. we should call him CRL Trulli? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, why not? I mean, Ross looks for time, he's always truly, to be fair. But I mean, let's, let's go along with that. Let's give it a good, uh, give, it, give him a bit of that. Rosberg is to the head of Drum Master Apex. Leopard, more so, you know, it's, it's just ever lasting. I want to see what more so can do now, though. Can he really push on these supers to the end? Because if he can, he's got a chance to get a leopard. Sorry to come across. Yeah, Apex all off the road there. He was bouncing off the wall of champions and Leopard pounces and takes the place like the predator he is and he snatches the place from Apex. Apex keeps his, his nose in there and just about takes the place back. That looked a little bit, uh, I don't know, hopeful from Apex, I suppose you could say. And Leopard is uh, left tasting his own medicine. He made an aggressive move earlier in the Grand Prix on Thomas and that looked like an, an aggressive response from Apex on this occasion and that's racing sometimes. You give it out, you've got to take it back, James. Yeah, absolutely. And there goes more so past uh, Leopard as well. But Leopard was on full lock going through turn two. That's absolutely incredible. But he managed to keep it all on the road as he gets another time penalty. My goodness me, there's, I've, I've, well, the World Cup's had plenty of penalties, but this is just ridiculous. Here we go. And I've so is that move from Leopard. What a move that was as well. The World Cup of penalties, the Canadian Grand Prix of penalties, and the Canadian Grand Prix of overtakes. Look at that, that's an incredible squeeze from Leopard. Oh, what a move he just made there into the hairpin. Diving down the inside of Morso, left him standing still. Then he almost squeezed Morso into the wall as they went charging down the back straight past the lake on the left hand side and Leopard takes sixth place back again and places himself back into that Toro Rosso sandwich. This race is insane as now Morso decides to do a little bit of grass cutting and corner cutting and that equals a three second time penalty and now he's way out of contention for that podium spot. Yeah, absolutely. Draw Master seems to have almost walked away of, uh, from Apex at the moment. Oh. He's looking right at Racy with Rosberg as Mike and uh, V6 getting out here as well. Gorsh up the inside. He's got the move done on Mike. Mike's not going to do any of that. He's going to give it right and give, give it a good go around the outside. Go on, he's going to give it in there and he's going to squeeze him out. Gorsh is all him on the inside. Oh, look at this. This is just kind of commentate over this. Mike up the inside into the end of the first sector. Gorsh runs a little bit deep. I'm sure Mike will oh, He's got to think a bit of damage on his front wing there. Drylix is coming up behind it as well. And he's got a feisty run. This is for a point in his own Grand Prix. These two squeezing each other out. There goes Mike on the oh. inside. Contact between the two of them. And that will be Mike's chance of point over and done with Drylix. Making an impact in the wrong way there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've already said it. You give it out, you take it back. Drylix was spun early on the Grand Prix uh, by V6 Racing. And now he's gone and spun Mike Marshmallow. And Mike Marshmallow initially, the problem all started when he tried to bite off more than he could chew. When he tried to pass V6 Racing, that dropped him into the clutches of Ghosh. Ghosh came charging past, and then Drylix got himself involved. And then he ended the debate of who was going to get that final point in an instant at his home Grand Prix, slamming it into the side of Mike Marshmallow. It was a bit of a aggressive move, wasn't it? A bit of a hopeful move, and uh, the two of them went pirouetting.
Absolutely. I've just taken a look at Martin's fuel. I know that's a weird thought, I know, but um, can you see it's within nine tenths of a second. This is the closest battle on the track, technically, at the moment, apart from John Lasser and Rosberg, of course. But um, he's got 5.5 laps of fuel left in his Sauber. He has got to be using some of that up, surely. Because that is a ridiculous amount for Martin. Could all, he isn't even using DRS in. So I've no idea what he's trying to uh, get out here, Thank but. Um, I think maybe something up with uh, Martin's, uh, Martin in this race from a connection point of view because not only if you're saying he's got five laps, it says to me he's got ten and a half laps of fuel, so there's something not right there. It's saying he's not opening DRS when he should be, so surely, and it also says he's uh, not stopped yet at the Grand Prix and has been on Ultrasofts for 33 laps, so all that information has got to be complete rubbish. So um, I don't think we can take any of Martin's uh, data seriously, can we? Can't really, it's a bit of a weird one to have, never really seen that before, but uh, Drillmaster wants to get keeping on tabs with Rosberg, I'm sure he's fair with the sight of a Mercedes real wing. Uh, it isn't a pretty sight for any car, especially when you consider Formula 1 in the last three or four years has been largely consistent of that. But uh, Apex has closed that gap right back up again. This could be a titanic battle for third place on track, at least, at the end of this Grand Prix. Yeah, it was shaping up earlier on, but it was about five or six cars earlier on. There's now only three of them left to battle for it, as uh, Leper and Morso have kind of faded out of it. Hayden is only eight seconds off the back of Morso. The way he's going, <laughs> he could have got there if there was another few laps in this Grand Prix. It's not going to be, though, as uh, we keep an eye on Drawmaster, Rosberg and Apex. Probably, I would think Drawmaster might know the penalty situation for Rosberg, so he might just think, OK, what's the point? Just sit here in fourth place, collect the podium when it comes, and we'll take it from there. But the, good, the other thing is, Martin's got at least one or two penalties as well, I'm sure. So if uh, Joe Master doesn't have one to his name, he might even get a little bit further up than that. But I don't think it's going to be that. No, I think he's going to remain third or second. Yeah. Joe Master does have a penalty in this race. Oh, he does. So, uh, yeah, kind of rules that one out of the uh, equation, unfortunately for him. But, uh, yes. yeah, that 34 or 35, it's absolutely flown by, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic Canadian Grand Prix. And we've not. Oh, <laughs> hang on a second. Oh, wait, that's oh, wow. okay. There's, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on that. You keep going. I'm going to keep an eye. <laughs> yeah, interesting there. So uh, it's Danny and Martin. Uh, yeah, just, just in the background to let us know uh, if uh, Danny's got any more penalties than Martin. I don't think he does, though. I think that's his first in the race. I'm pretty Ooh. sure it is. There's been that many, yeah. it's difficult for us to count up as uh, Rosberg, Drawmaster, and Apex are all battling really hard again down that back straight. And as you see, 34 laps have flown by. Forget Switzerland versus Serbia. This has been insane. Forget the World Cup. What a load of rubbish that is. There's been enough one nils in that tournament for one for one year. Let's focus on what has been an incredible Canadian Grand Prix. Up to the line comes Drawmaster, up behind CRL Rosberg with Apex hot on their heels as well. No way through. It is the final lap of the Grand Prix. It's Danny M7 in the lead, even after penalties, I believe. Is that correct, yeah, James? That's correct, yeah. Uh, at the moment. And TRL Martin is in second. And by the looks of it, it's going to be the victory that Danny M7 was hoping for. Remember, he started on pole back in Melbourne. He looked good for that victory, and it wasn't to be after a big shunt on that opening lap. But it does look like today is going to be his day. He's in the final sector of the lap now and heading down to the hairpin for the final time on lap 35 out of 35. He's driven superbly here today and is a big contender for driver of the day. We, can, we will discuss driver of the day in a few moments. It's going into the hairpin. Drawmaster on Rosberg has a look. Hey, Apex back. like a steam train from a long way back. Goes side by side and can't find a way through. And Drawmaster climbs on. But we've got to go back to Danny who's coming up to the final corner with TRL Martin following him all the way. Martin couldn't do it today. It's going to be a brilliant win for Danny M7. The Force India driver sensationally wins the brilliant Canadian Grand Prix. Martin is home second, up to the line. It's almost a photo finish between these three. Rosberg third, Drawmaster fourth and Apex fifth. But Drawmaster picks up the podium as a result of penalty. Oh. Then it's Morso who gets sick with Leper seventh as he cracks across the line. Hayden is going to be eighth. I wouldn't be doing that, Hayden, weaving across the track when there's a lot of drivers with penalties ahead. You might have got more places. Nope, there wasn't to be. He's eighth. Dorsch is going to be ninth. And Mike Marshmallow is going to be a tenth to end. What has been an enthralling, an enthralling Canadian Grand Prix, James. What a race. That was a fantastic Grand Prix. And what a drive from Danny. Let's give him some respect, because he has done 
mesmerised the job in this race. Never really looks in danger. That to be honest, he looked pretty yeah, set in stone for uh, that Grand Prix win. I don't know whether that's his first of the season or not. But I can tell you, he'll be mightily pleased with that. Um, a tremendous effort from him. Um, yeah, fantastic race, fantastic. Let's see what these drivers have to say for themselves. As I've got Danny and Drawmaster Master um, added. Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Well, um, here is the podium, and uh, look at that, Danny M7 on the top step of the podium. A fantastic win from him. He really has been arguably the standout driver so far this season from that pole in Australia. The two podiums that he's picked up as well. That incredible drive this week, and now the victory is finally as he stands on the top step of the podium. And if, as you can see, he's joined by TRL Martin, who ran him close, but not close enough to win on this occasion. There's no back-to-back -back wins for him. Third place on the podium, Drawmaster, he gets that after a superb drive where he picked up only three seconds worth of penalties. The same as the rest of the guys in the top three. But what a race, there it is, the Canadian Grand Prix. Absolute classic. Danny M7, he wins from TRL Martin second, Drawmaster third, and CRL Rosberg in fourth. TRL Apex finished just ahead of his teammate in fifth with DVR Morsel in sixth. Then it was the Renault in seventh. Who was in that Renault? Who was in it? It wasn't V6, who was the other Renault? Oh. Sure. Leopard. Leopard, of course. There we go. Leopard was seventh. He was involved in all sorts of action. Hayden was eighth. Roche was nine. And Mike, Mar Ma Mike, Mike Marshmallow from tenth position. Sorry, from fourteenth ended it in tenth. Dralex in his home Grand Prix. Heartbreak for him. He couldn't quite get the point. He came home in eleventh. But where do we start? The drivers are with us here to be interviewed. What? Canadian Grand Prix that was and Danny I believe you're with us are you yes you are yeah Danny M7 Just. first win of the season third podium well done what a race and you looked superb out there didn't even look as if you were going to be challenged for that victory brilliant drive yeah thank you very much I mean uh, not having a uh, driver um, is like Taylor Martin right behind you the whole race is not fun at all um, and I was from the I think fifth lap I was one one in the way from getting a penalty and I, I didn't know the drivers around me you know what they had so I just tripped Martin you know like he had a penalty and lap 34 in the middle sector <laughs> I went a touch wide and got the warning so at that point I thought you know that I lost the race um, so I was just pushing last lap I couldn't even look at the screen you know when I crossed the line but in the end Martin did get a penalty and yeah very happy with that I felt as though I could have, should have got pulled, lost a bit in the final sector, so I felt as though this is a bit of redemption for Quali, and yeah, finally got that win, and um, good challenge for that championship, finally. What's, what's happened lately, Danny? Because it's not just in ILR, it's in AOR as well. You seem to be hitting form, you seem to be ticking all the boxes, driving as good as possibly you've ever driven, is that fair to say? I mean, how is it happening all of yeah. a sudden? You're driving brilliantly. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think I am driving better than better than I ever have. I, I don't know why. Um, I just, just feel really comfortable at the minute, and yeah, just I don't know. Someone, someone, someone's clicked. I think something's clicked. Well, congratulations! Superb job. Well done on that thank victory. You. And uh, that's now three podiums I believe, yeah, three podiums in four races, I mean you were on pole in Australia, you could have ended up with a victory there as well, I mean it's been an incredible start to your season, so well done to you and best of luck when we head to Austria next week, great job there, of course TRL Martin was second, he has unfortunately not joined us for the inter interviews, but Drawmaster, the super Swede, he was third and uh, uh, good job <laughs> from you Drawmaster, you were in the thick of it, what a battle it was for that third place all race long, and in the end, it came down to penalties, and you were the man that picked it up. Great drive. Thank you. Uh, actually, I didn't know how and where and everybody was uh, uh, with the penalty. Uh, unfortunately, I had one penalty and two warnings, so it was very close that I almost picked up uh, another penalty to get the six-second penalty. Uh, I was almost sure that Apex had none penalty because I was asking Jeff all the time, uh, drive behind, drive behind, what, <laughs> what penalty does he have and everything, but I didn't get any response of that. So, yeah, it was uh, like a surprise that I uh, ended up on, uh, on the podium. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, whole, through a whole race, um, just um, battling and I had a moment at turn 8, uh, went a little bit wide. Uh, 
off the track and lost three places. But uh, uh, I, I just wanted to, to go with the uh, ultra soft, uh, super soft strategy. But uh, that was thinking I, I would change the strategy, go for the uh, soft speed down. Then yeah, in the end it's out. So yeah, I'm very real pleased with it. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic race. I mean, there was I think there was one lap, you were fourth, then you were third, then you were seventh, then you were eighth. It was an absolutely yeah, exactly, ridiculous exactly. race in the early stages. It was, it was mental. I mean, how fun was that to be a part of? And uh, yeah, tell us about it. It was mental. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great word. Crazy indeed for describing for all, all uh, um, up and downs. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very... Um, I'm uh, glad that everybody gave uh, a lot of space, even though it's quite um, uh, tidy here around uh, Montreal. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I I'm just happy that we, we, we didn't uh, end up in the barriers. We all um, uh, instead get pen got penalties, and yeah, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I echo what you say. It's a really tight track, and uh, sometimes you get some desperate moves. There was a few of those out there on the track, but it didn't affect that battle for the podium so much which is good. Uh, yeah, it was in general, it was a brilliant race uh, to be a part of, to watch um, for, for Racecraft. It was brilliant, and uh, congratulations on your third place. We now Thank have you. to go, of course, to Martin. Martin, great job, second place. Not enough to get back-to-back -back victories today. Uh, talk us through it. I tried, I tried, but um, yeah, Danny was, um, he was the man to beat. He drove a brilliant race, so hats up. Uh, obviously, he got the right. position in you know, the early stages of the race, and uh, he was able to sort of extend the stint on the ultra softs. I had to go for an undercut because my rears were screwed after pivoting up the Rosberg, kind of destroyed them. They looked up pretty well, managed to get a good gap to, I think it was, um, he was in provisional third, must have been Rosberg. And yeah, Danny was just very, very quick all race. Obviously, he had the advantage of the pressure tyres, but, um, but yeah, he kept his head and. Uh, I'm really happy with second. Uh, there's a truck that I really hate back into it. So, yeah, past my expectations, and uh, I'm not sure what the championship stands are. I think I was one points behind. Rosberg came fourth, so a good result for me, and uh, obviously great result for Danny after having a bit of a inconsistent start. Obviously getting taken out by Alonso at the start of the season. So, yeah, I'm happy for the both of us, and obviously yeah, as well. Two yes. three. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, good job, Martin. Uh, I have to say, you you yourself had a, had a, an unfortunate start to your uh, ILR season. Obviously, you weren't the <laughs> opener, but of course, in Bahrain, we all know what happened there. I don't actually think I've had a proper chance to talk to you about that. Okay. Oh, no. Going back to that, I mean, come on, you've got to tell me. Heartbroken. How does that feel? You, you, you literally uh, drove the perfect race back then, didn't you? I, was simp I just simply pushed too hard, I think. You know, I was like eight seconds down the road, and I just kept trying to pump in a lap, so I tried to sort of... I don't know, that sounds cringy, but sort of make a statement to the rest of the league and people watching. And it, I just saw a tyre wear kick in, it was just like 80%. I was just like, what have I done here? <laughs> I, was, I backed off towards the end and uh, kept off the curb, stint wheel spin. And I think it was like 84%, the rear just went. And, uh, it's just frustrating. You certainly made a statement. Uh, yeah, for the wrong reason. But uh, that's how it goes. You learn from them and uh, took the positives from the pace. But uh, yeah. I'll see you, Grayson. Yeah, yeah, that is, it sure is, Martin. And uh, in qualifying, uh, what, what, how, were you on, how were you going on that second lap? I seen you ended up backing out of it, I think, uh, on that second lap. We were, we, had a few issues in, uh, we had a few issues with the stream, so we didn't quite get all the qualifying together. But in that final lap, did you have a, a few issues? I was on for pole, I think. But yeah, I kind of screwed oh. up on that. Wasn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you ask everyone on the, in the league, you know, how was your lap? They'll probably say they can improve. So, you know, I can't really complain. But uh, P3 was... Uh, yeah, pretty solid. Decent lap. Yeah, very fair. Very fair comment to make. Uh, James, I've got to ask you, you got any questions for the drivers? Anything you wouldn't like to add? Oh, I'd just like to congratulate all three of them. Once again, fantastic. Nice to see you face on the podium. Well done, Kimmy. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, I mean, I don't really know what to add because we know this championship's going to be close now. Uh, Austria, that's a big statement for a race. I mean, we're looking at that race potentially looking at, you know, Anybody who can go on and win a bit more from there, we'll start to see it split. I'd like, I don't, I don't want to think that. Obviously, that'd be quite not not bad, but I mean, I don't know. It's a bit of a difficult one to judge at the moment. Fantastic race, nonetheless. Um, congratulations to all you three. Don't have any questions, but it was a fantastic Grand Prix, wasn't it, Andy? Yeah, it sure Thank was. You, it was seven or eight drivers in that Cheers, race. Man. Seven or eight. 
seven or eight of them that could have won it. I mean, really, there was. Obviously, uh, Danny was, was so strong today, and Martin, of course, as well. But uh, really, seriously, I mean, Rosberg, Leopard, Joe, I mean, if, if Joe was here, of course, more so, Mike, Apex, Joe Master, they were all fighting hard. Even Hamilton as well, who had a bit of a nightmare today, I mean, it has to be said, with various penalties. It was it was brilliant. And uh, the races that are left, forget the World Cup. This is where, that, Friday night, this is going to be incredible every single week. That race was absolutely epic and look at the races we've got coming up classics like austria britain belgium japan brazil some real classic tracks that the drivers love some real good races to to race at so be sure everyone to tune in because this is absolutely brilliant and i've got to say thank you very much to you guys for joining us it was absolutely brilliant everyone watching on the stream the drivers congratulations to all three of you on that podium and uh, yeah it really did give us a fantastic race so that's that's all from me james anything to add that's it. That's a fantastic Grand Prix, and as I say, congratulations to all the drivers, but let's move on to Austria. Let's see what that has to bring. Yep. Okay, folks, goodbye from everyone. Danny M7 is the king in Canada. We'll see you next Friday in Austria for the Austrian Grand Prix. Good night.